God bless you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate you once again, and I'm sure this is March, and in the, in the month of March, you will march on, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you and your family. We thank God for each and every one of you, for all our viewers, and we thank God for what he's doing in Jesus' sanctuary. Above all, we thank God for what he's doing in our lives, individual lives, families. Only no one can pay him, no one can and absolutely appreciate God in full. But as it were, it's good to appreciate him. And thank God too for some of you that are out there through your emails. You have been fantastic. Your words of encouragement, uh, those of you that do writing. But I can't thank you enough for some of you out there that are helping us in this program. Only God, we bless each and every one of you. And uh, we appreciate your family. I soak your family, your children, each and every one of you, all my viewers, in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood will deliver you and deliver us from powers and the agents of darkness, and we will be overcomers. In Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. If you don't know Jesus Christ, by before the end of this program, we are praying. The Jesus that touched us will touch you at your own time, because the Bible says that he that wins soul is wise. Jesus Christ will not die in vain in our lives, and in your own life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Of course, it's good to update or, or rather intimate you about um, the times of our program because some of you out there, it's good to be part of the service. Every Wednesday, we call it deliverance service where we come to pray. You pray. That is deliverance. You deliver. You pray uh, for breakthrough. It's prayer that brings the answer. Prayer is the key. Prayer, and you join us from 10 o'clock in the morning to 12 noon every Wednesday, and you will not regret it. That is a quality time spent in the presence of God. Every Wednesday, deliverance hour, we call it a time of prayer, a time where you sing and pray and call unto the throne of God, and that is called deliverance, and, and you will be happy. You will never regret it because no one person that has ever said, oh, I wasted my time. Because you will pray out yourself and you will pray and seek the presence and the glory of God. Of course, when you seek him, you will. If you knock, it shall be open. So come and knock every Wednesday. Knock unto the throne of God. He will open and hear your cry, all right? Of course, on Friday, the first and the last Friday of every month, from 9 p.m., we have our all night, they call night vigil, the first and the last. And what, what do we do? We still pray. In fact, that is what we do. This is a prayer house. Jesus Christ said, my house is a house of prayer, and we want to keep it as such. It is not a house of business. It is a house of prayer. But this night is night vigil where we pray. Why night? The, the Bible tells about the covenant of the day and the covenant of, of the night. So we want to equally kill in into the covenant and the rules of engagement of the night. And that's why we pray at night uh, because it is the night. Is the, the Bible says, Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping men endure all night, but joy cometh in the morning. So we pray all night. And joy, of course, we descend in the morning by force in Jesus' name. All right, of course, Sunday is celebration hour in the morning from 9 o'clock to 12 noon every Sunday and from 12 to 2 p.m. You will not miss it. And God will bless you as I invite the choir. Let your glory be above all the Let your glory be above all Be thou exalted, be thou exalted, O Lord, above Be thou exalted, be thou exalted, O Lord. 
name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Alright, okay, today and I want to thank God for today and uh, look, look, 
we want to teach on the secret place of the Most High. There is a psalm that everybody knows about this psalm. Christians and non-Christians. Those in the other side of the kingdom. Those who are the children of light and the children of darkness. They know this scripture. It do you, can you beat it? Even Satan knows this scripture. <laughs> Even Satan himself, the devil himself, knows this scripture. It will tell you about the import or how important this scripture is in the realm of, of the spirit. Psalm 91. He said that we that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I want to talk and dwell on the secret place of the most high. What is the secret place of the most high? Is it uh, somewhere in the mountain where you hide away? Is it somewhere in a covert? Is it when you look at yourself? Is it when you separate from the world? You don't even answer your phone. Is it when you lock in yourself in a, 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 a special place and don't even allow the person to talk to you? If the, the secret place of the most high is all this and is none of what I've said. I said it again. It's all this and it's none of what I've said. Because the secret place of the most high has the physical dimension of it and the spiritual dimension of it. Uh, because he said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So I want, I want to start off this teaching with talking on the secret place of the most high. A secret place, generally speaking, talks of a place of seclusion. It is a place that is secluded to you. I mean, a place that is a, you could mean an enclosure, a refuge, a place where none can easily get or reach you. That is the physical dimension of the secret place. He said that those that find time to separate themselves unto God, to seek the face of God, those who are oblivious of their circumstances, in order to say, God, where are you? What is going on in my life? I want an answer. It's called, he said that they that dwell under the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So somebody please read me Psalm 9 verse 9. And so, all right, uh, first of all, Psalm, 9, um, Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2, please. Then another person, Psalm 9 verse 9. And the other person, Psalm 32 verse 7. And the other person, Job 10, 11. And the other person, one, one Psalm, Psalm 139 verse 15. May God help you. Yes, Psalm 2. Yes. Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2. And two. Yes, sir. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, uh -huh. He is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. My God in Him will I trust. All right. The time he said that He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. What is a shadow? A shadow is like a cover. A shadow is like something that can shine as a shield to prevent anything. You don't want to come near you. So a shadow, but this shadow, because shadows are powerful, but don't allow me to get into the realm of shadow. And because if I get into the depth of shadow, the, the power of shadow, because if the Peter shadow can hear, it equally means that they can use shadow to fight you. Shadow versus shadow. But I'm not coming from that angle. I'm coming, I want to, I want to restrict this teaching to Psalm 91. That he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We are trying to define the secret place. Psalm 9, verse 9. Yes. Praise the Lord. Psalm 9, verse 9. The Lord also will be a refuge uh -huh. for the oppressed. Uh -huh. A refuge uh -huh. in times of trouble. So that uh, they say that the secret place of the Most High is a place of refuge. A place in time of trouble. A place you go and you feel secure. 
you feel like secured. You are protected. So I said that there is a physical dimension of it, and there's a spiritual dimension of it, but I'm, I'm now dealing on the physical aspect of it. Psalm 32, sir. Anybody? Psalm 32, verse 7. Yeah. Thou art my hiding place. Uh -huh. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. I said, so a secret place is a hiding place where, where you trouble cannot get in there. So that a secret place is a hiding place. So any place that can hide you can be a secret place. Yes, I would do. Yes, Job, Job 10, 11, yes? Job 10, 11. And Psalm 139, verse 15, I would do, sir. Job 10, 11. Yes. Thou hast clothed me uh -huh. with skin and flesh, uh -huh. and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Uh -huh. Continue, sir. Yes, no, stop there. So, a secret place is a place you are fenced, as it were, out of what is happening within your immediate environment. And finally, Psalm 139, verse 15, anybody, yes? Psalm 139, verse 15. Yes. My substance was not hid from, from thee uh -huh. when I was made in secret uh -huh. and curious the rot in the lowest parts of the earth. Now, so all this, the secret place of the most high, so there is an understanding that out there, before in the Garden of Eden, there was no secret place. Adam and Eve have no secret place. Because in the Garden of Eden, so even when they tried to create a secret place under a leaf, it was not possible because there was no secret place. Why? They were trying to hide from their shadow, from their sin. But when we say he did that dwelling in the secret place of Most High, there is an implicit understanding that in where you are, in your circumstances, in your situation, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your situation, about your children, about your husband, about your wife, where you live, in your country, in your village, there is, the, the environment may not be too assured. There is an implied insecurity. So you need a superior authority in order to secure you from the agent of darkness. That it is implied that the world that we live is not safe. Spiritually speaking. So you need a superior security. So that the psalmist said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that God with God's shadow will, will be a protective shield. The world that we live is not a bed of roses. The Bible talks about arrows, weapons of warfare. The Bible talks of terrors of the night, destruction that wasted at news day. The Bible talks of evil spirits. So, because the world that we live in is not safe in every material particular. So, as a man, as a human being, as a family, you need the security of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Because when you are secured under the shadow, because the world, implicitly speaking, go to John, John 17, 15. God, I mean, Jesus Christ said something. He said, God, I'm not praying you leave pastors and others in this world forever. I'm not asking you that pastors and, and Oko will not die at the, at the right time you have approved. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to leave them in this world forever. No, no, no. Because man is meant to die. But save them from the evil that is in the world. Yes? Yes. John 17, yes. John 17, 15. Yes, sir. I pray not uh -huh. that thou shouldest take them out of the world, uh -huh. but that thou shouldest keep them uh -huh. from the evil. Uh -huh. That you keep them from the evil that is in the world. It is implied. He said that do you keep them from evil. And one way to keep us from evil is to come under the shadow of the Almighty. He said that because when you come under the shadow of the Almighty, the shield, a hiding place, where God himself 
is the shield. It's arrow. Who can, how, which arrow can work against you? Which arrow can penetrate? Which affliction can come? Because the sixth place of the monster is like a fortress being mined by the Almighty Himself. Because Ephesians 6 12. The Bible made us to understand that there are battles of life. It says, our, There are battles of life, and these battles are beyond what you see. Principalities are powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6 12. So, yes, Ephesians 6 12. Yes. Ephesians 6, 12. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh -huh. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, so, so if we wrestle it not against things that you see, so you need the, 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 the invisible God, the God that we can never see to be our protector. There are limitations to what man can do. Whether man likes it or not, even though we're in the age of where man believes they know a lot, they are just describing other creatures creatures in the water. There's a new shark. If, if, well, I read newspapers. A new shark now, a new shark that they have not seen that kind before. So assuming, because they have this understanding of how a shark is, they just discovered last week, 2019, 2019, there are other species of shark that the eye or the, and the mouth position are different from the normal shark. And do you know what? The world is just discovering other planets. And they can never stop discovering. That is the problem of science, that they didn't create the world. And God created the world, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The other time, I was reading, they want to start a discussion to, um, to, the, um, to, to space. <laughs> and a rich woman just removed her name two weeks ago because I was just saying in my mind, you may go there and the, the, the thing will blast. And people must have said, have you even, some of you have not visited Ubuluku. In, in Delta State. You have not visited Kafancha. You have not gone to China. There are towns in China you don't know, sir. There are towns in, uh, in Germany you don't know, in the uh, in, in US. Villages you don't know. We have not finished visit. <laughs> you know, uh, at times, I just said, I just said, mankind, there's, there is a problem. And you say that you have U, UFO, that is unidentified, uh, objects who are flying up there. You are going up there and they are telling you, okay, or oh, he's not telling you that knows how to, to interfere. But let me come back. What am I saying? That there is, we live in both the physical and the spiritual world. The spiritual world is as real. And for you to get an effective pro protection in the physical world, you need the spiritual protection, which is dwelling and coming under the shadow of the Almighty. Like I said, it's not only bound in physical aspect of it. You have the spiritual dimension. So when they say, we, we that dwell in the secret place of the Mosa, is where we have an assurance that our soul is being Secured by God Himself, there is an there is a sort of an assurance, a peace out there, that whatever may come your way, there is this song that says that uh, my hand, yeah, my life is in your hands. That whatever the enemy can throw at me, whatever arrow can come, whatever affliction, God, my hand. My life is in your hand. This, I think uh, today I was talking about Job 19. Is it Job? He, he talks that, that I know that my what? Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. Oluwa, 
I know Maridi Maliva. Baba I know Maridi Maliva. Oh Mamma, I know Maridi Maliva. He live forever. Baba I know. Sing it. I want to come on. Let's go. Come on, let's go. I know my come on, let's go. Hey, I know Maridi Maliva. Back. One more time. Come on. Let's go. I know. Come on. Let's go. Baba I know. 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 That God tested, but He has this confidence in His that whatever may come my way, well, I did. I didn't pray for my business to collapse. I didn't pray for my family to have to be bereaved overnight. All my children are dead. I didn't do anything. I didn't commit any error. I mean, any sin, any fault. But what have I done? But He didn't go into the blame game. But He just went. He just said something, and I want to share it in Job 19.25. Yes, anybody? Yes, please. Job 19.25. Uh-huh. For I know uh-huh. that my Redeemer liveth, uh-huh. and that he shall stand at the latter day uh-huh. upon the earth. He said, look, I know I may be going through hell. I have lost this. I have lost everything I have. Even, even when I've not done anything, Job never knew it was a cosmic struggle, battle. Between the, the forces of good and bad. But he was like the spiritual guinea pig on, on the face of the earth. And but he was saying that, look, what can I do? What else can you do? If you do everything in your life to make sure your marriage is working, if you do everything in your life to make sure your children are well, if you do everything in your life to live well, do you know that you have people? This says to, uh, you, you can be doing all the exercise and everything. I'm, I'm not saying that exercises are wrong. No, you can do them. Of course, I do. But that does not guarantee health. I've seen people who are so, who even breathe oxygen, fresh one, made by man. And they see that. I see people who eat in the pit. Do you know that those who eat pig from those beans are more healthy? I, I'm telling you, they, because they are immune to disease. In fact, they kill disease. Because they kill the disease. Because they are disease comes in when there is a good zone, a healthy zone. But when disease jump disease, somebody is hungry, you are telling him to wash hand to eat. Uh, he has not seen food for two days. The the jam will kill the disease in the food. Because <laughs> what am I trying to say? You live not by your effort. It's not by your might. It's not by might. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by power. So you, you don't live by your might or your grace. It's just because you are at the mercy. And that's why the psalmist is saying that, going me because I, I want to um, give me some uh, 27, yes. Anybody there, give me some 27. Oh, uh, yeah, verse 5. Psalm 27, verse 5, and Psalm 31, verse 20. Psalm, Psalm 31, verse 20. Yes, I'm yeah, Psalm 27, verse 5. Yes. For in the time of trouble, uh-huh. he shall hide me uh-huh. in, in his pavilion. Exactly. Uh-huh. In the secret of his tabernacle, in, uh, yes. shall he hide me, uh-huh. and he shall set me upon a rock. Uh-huh. So that no matter what you are going through, the psalmist says, look, I know in time of trouble, there are things you are going through. If you know that the Almighty, because the shadow of the Almighty, which I will explain, does not exclude trouble not to come. No. Trouble can come. Affliction can come. But it will not consume you. That is the bottom line. As long as you you have flesh, trouble, challenges, issues of life, things you cannot understand may come your way. And you say, why me? Stop asking, why me? Know that 
you will overcome. Is it tumor? Is it cancer? Is it disease? As long as you believe that what can I do? What else can you do? You don't need to kill yourself. You don't need to hate others. You don't need to destroy yourself and go into self uh, withdraw and you and you don't you don't want to you you change your phone say no 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 that is not the solution to your problem no life is for the living life is a challenge you can overcome you cannot over you cannot be an overcomer until you have gone through so you cannot be a graduate until you have passed exams the challenges and the issues of life are like Graduate, uh, undergraduate of uh, undergraduate course of life. Until you win, you will not become a father, a mother, a grandfather, a grandmother. But those who are grandfathers and grandmothers, they, they, they went through hell. But they were, you must secure yourself under the shadow of the Almighty. And that is where I'm going. Now, Psalm 31, any person, verse 20, uh, and Psalm 17 verse 8. Yes, yes. I'm and 31 you. verse 20. Yeah. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence uh -huh. from the pride of man. Uh -huh. Thou shalt keep them secretly uh -huh. in a pavilion uh -huh. from the strife of tongues. So, so it means that there are people that you cannot afflict their soul because there is the physical and the spiritual dimension of the secret place. When I said, I have a father, almighty father, who is King of kings, Lord of lords, I have a father. So, I have a father. Who is King of kings, Lord of lords, I have a father. I must sing it. I have a father. And let's go. Almighty father, who is King of kings, Lord of lords, I have a father. Come on. I have a father. Are you with me? Because I got to preach. As I shouted, he goes to shout. You keep quiet. They will be in the realm of confusion. Shouting is a shout of victory. Amen. Quiet is when you want to enjoy the dividend of the victory. Amen. Now, follow me. Get it clear. The secret place of the, of the Most High does not exclude you from every entanglement. No, but it makes you, as it were, to be focused. You see, why the enemy gets some of us is that you are here and there. You are, you are not focused. Nothing that happens to you is overnight. What you underrate, the signal you are seeing about your son or your daughter from day one, if you begin to take it and challenge it and query it earlier, the better for you because prevention is better than what cure. Proverbs 22, verse 6. If you train a child in the way of the Lord, when the child will grow, he will not depart. But the secret place of the most high does not mean that you are excluded, that you are not, you are, you separate yourself. No, you separate yourself. The entanglements and the challenges of life are there. But you have a focus. And you are more real to God. There are times you are real to God. In the secret place of the Most High is when you tell God your mind. One thing about the secret place of the Most High, when we come to church, we all dress up. Oh, and, and, the, and I'm preaching good. And people are screaming. Meanwhile, you have issues. That is not the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is that when all the noise has quieted, 
where all is gone, and you sit and you look at your matter, and you say, God, where are you? You are all alone. And that is where you ought to be honest with God. How did I know? It happened to Abraham. Abraham in Genesis 15. The Bible recorded that Abraham was just alone and meditating, I'm sure, and slept, and God came and said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, ah, this man has come again. How are you, sir? He said, Abraham. Yes, I want that Genesis 15. Yes, I want it. I, I like it. Because once I get into heaven, I will see Abraham. I will see him. I will say, Abraham, I praise you. You are honest with God. From there, I like to be honest with God. One on one. Not in the church. In the open. Because you are, your friends may know your problem. And they will go to town with it. But where you are just all alone, Genesis 15 from verse 1. Yeah. After these things, yes. the word of the Lord came unto Abraham uh -huh. in a vision, uh -huh. saying, uh -huh. Fear not, Abraham. Uh -huh. I am thy shield uh -huh. and thy exceeding great reward. Uh -huh. And Abraham said, uh -huh. Lord God, uh -huh. what wilt thou give me, uh -huh. seeing I go childless? Uh, I'm okay. If you want to you say, God, excuse me. What we, he was honest. I'm going childless. Look, nobody in my household is my son. It's a secret place. Matthew 6 6. In the secret place of the Most High is when you are honest with God because I have to run fast now so that I cannot continue on this teaching the next time about the secret place of the Most High. Because I want each of you to say something in two, two minutes at least. Anyhow, yes, I'm with you. Matthew 6 6. Yes. Matthew, Matthew 6, 6. Yes. But thou, when thou prayest, uh -huh. enter into thy closet. Uh -huh. And when thou hast shut thy door, exactly. pray to thy father, uh -huh. which is in secret. Uh -huh. And thy father, which is in secret, uh -huh. shall reward thee openly. So there are times, there are times you go and lock up and say, God, please excuse me. Leave all the shouting. I was shouting in the church. Leave all the dancing. I was dancing. I was just trying to dance, even though you have yet to answer me. Look at all my prayer. I don't have a job. I'm not married. I'm still sick. I'm still dancing unto you. He said, but God, that one is in public. Now, Kilode, what is the matter? I can't you. So you are honest to God in the secret place of the Most High. Mark 1, uh, is it? Luke 4, 42, 41 to 42, please. Luke 4, 41 to 42. And um, somebody, First Kings 17, 20. 1 Kings 17, 20, and 2 Kings 4, 33. Luke 4, 41 to 42. And devils also came out of many, uh -huh. crying out mm -hmm. and saying, mm -hmm. Thou art Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And he, rebuking them, mm -hmm. suffered them not to speak, mm -hmm. for they knew that he was Christ. Okay. And when it was day, yeah. he departed yeah. and went into a desert place. Okay. Jesus Christ will always avoid the crowd. After he had dealt with the crowd, as a man or a woman of God, have you ever sat apart? At times, I stay apart. I stand at travel. I stay alone. I don't call. Only my family I call. I go into prayers. I kneel down. It's the secret place of the most high. At times, I go to Nigeria. I and the pastors, and we stay in one place for one week, only praying, only praying, only praying. It's the secret place. Do you find time to do that? Yes, first king seventeen twenty, any person and second king, yeah, because yes. First king seventeen twenty. Yes. And he cried unto the Lord uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. O Lord my God, uh -huh. has thou also brought evil upon the widow uh -huh. with whom I sojourned uh -huh. by slaying her son? Because that was the when the man of God has healed and the the son that he, that God gave him to the way. So the who, who went there? Elijah said, God, excuse me. Did he say it openly? No. no. Secretly say, God, you know, that there was, leave. this one is private. I'm just saying to all of you, I don't want people to hear. All of you of you that listen to me. I don't want people to hear. There was a woman that gave me then 20 million. It's not, I wish it's, a, I wish it's in pounds. I will collect it. <laughs> now, and God answered her and she gave me that check. And I use it to build the church we have in my town, village, as we speak, is still there. 
by God's grace. I used everything, no down inside them. And she said, oh, there was no money. They are trying to challenge the victory. I said, no. And she called me. She said, oh, oh. And I said, forget it. I prayed to God. He said, please, I should pray. And I said, I prayed. So she dropped the phone. Do you know I didn't pray? Do you know what I prayed? I said, God, you chop, I chop. Finish. You must not. <laughs> Don't allow this business to stop. <laughs> and the answer came. You know, at times, this is your, your prayer. Oh, Lord, my God, my dear, my where are you? According to your word. <clears throat> Don't tell God as you feel. Say, God, what? Is, ah, I have done this. I have done that. I'm closing. Because of time, I, I don't know who I'm speaking to. But before then, I'm going to give each of you one second because of time. Say a, a prayer for our viewers. Just, you, I want you to, everybody stretch out first. Father, all my viewers, that thing you cry in the secret place, there's a woman there. What you cry for a son in the secret place of the Most High has come to you. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Yes, the next person, pray, 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 yes. Yes, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, we bless you for the viewers. You know their need, you know the things that cannot express to any man, but only you know that need. We ask, my Father, my God, that you meet them and you touch them in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Father, in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you. Thank you for our viewers. Father, our prayers and that, O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, that anybody who is watching, Father, let them go into the secret place and cry out to you, Father God, and surprise them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you for such a time as this. Father, we pray for our viewers, those who may be going through situations that they have sought your face privately in the secret place. We pray today that that secret place will be a place of comfort a place of restoration, and above all, a place of joy, that they will give, lift their hands unto God and say, yes, they spoke to you, and you did answer them. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we glorify your name. We thank you for every viewer that is um, watching this program. My Lord and my God, whatever be the hard desires of your children, whatever be their issues, whatever our viewers are going through, my Lord and my God, you are the God that sees it in secret. Father, we pray this day that you meet each and every one of them in their, uh, uh, as they, you meet their hard desires, as they speak to you, as they cry out to you in their secret place, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. So, my Lord and my God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Each and every one of us, the Jesus that touched us, that the same Jesus will touch you and your family and your home. And in that name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I make a pronouncement. Anything that does not make you proud, anything that makes you to cry in your kitchen, when you are all alone, when your wife is not there, or your husband is not there, or your friends are not there, or your father, or your mother, or your relations, or your pastors are not there, and you cry in secret, the answer must come. Amen. Let the God of Abraham wipe every tear, Amen. because he wiped our tears. He will wipe your own. Amen. Is it the issue of barrenness? Is it the issue of affliction? Is it the issue of frustration? Is it the issue of children? Is the issue of husband or wife? Let there be peace. Amen. My Father, we thank you and we bless you. To you be this glory and honor in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the angels of God, let there be a visitation. There, there is somebody there. I cancel that your bad dream. It will never see the light of the day. Let the good dreams come to pass. Amen. And I'm hearing for somebody Delay has ended in your life. Amen. Let there be manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's somebody that divination and enchantment will never prosper in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is wonderful? He is Jesus. Who is powerful? He is Jesus. Who is excellent? 
to introduce this book to you. Have you read Pastor Zor's first edition of Dreams and Visions? If you have, this is a masterpiece. This is the second edition. It's not just talking about dreams. It's talking about dreams, visions, revelations, and trances. It goes further than the first edition to explain the difference between dreams, visions, and revelations. Have you ever been in a dream or you wake up suddenly maybe for sleep, maybe under a nightmare? 
or you have some maybe a masculine pursuing you, or a dog pursuing you, or you have an encounter with a dead relative, or something happened, then wake up and you know that you are troubled, but you know that something has happened, but you can't put your finger on it. It's a dictionary of dreams, a book. It tells from ABC of dreams what that dream could be. The meaning depends on the situation. And not you go further than that to also to give you the prayer points. What to do, how you can counsel it's a bad dream, or how you can claim it if it's a good dream. So this book is a, a book that you must have. So even before you begin to seek assistance from a man of God of many body, you need to have an idea what's happening in your spiritual life. And with this book, you cannot go wrong. So I want to recommend this book to every Christian, every child of God, for everybody watching, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, it doesn't matter who, where, who you are. But this book is very essential because it open your eyes to what's happening in the spirit realm, to what happened in your life, in your family, in the life of your wife, your children, your family member. So you can know that the enemy does not take you, take advantage of you. Buy this book. It will bless you richly and it will bless your family. And God bless you in Jesus' name.